In this video, I'm going to show you two amazing features that just came out with Google Gemini 2.0 that will change the way you work day to day. You can now not only upload a video as context, but you can also share your screen in real time and get an AI to troubleshoot any problem for you while you're doing it or even teach you a skill while staring at the very screen that you're staring at. Despite all the AI goodies we've received in December thus far, these are the two that truly blew me away. If we haven't met yet, my name is Mark and I run my own AI automation agency called Prom Advisors for the past two years. We work with companies in every industry to better understand where AI fits best in their workflows. Now I'm way too excited to show you how these work, so let's dive right in. Now the first thing you wanna do is go to aistudio.google.com. So make a note of that because it's hard to actually Google this Google link for some reason. Once you go, and make an account, you should be able to see a few things here. So create a prompt and stream real time. There are all kinds of new things that came out from Gemini just a few days ago, but I'll be focusing on just, again, those two main features. So in create a prompt, if you go to add, you'll see now you can add sample media and under sample media, you can add some videos, but also you can upload a file and you're allowed to upload MP4s. So typically my experience, if I had like a 13 minute MP4, it truly struggled with, if not, it didn't accept it at all. I think the magic number is seven to 20 megabytes. Outside of that, things become a bit trickier and uh, especially the token count gets more exponential. So I just noted that two to five minutes is the sweet spot. Now as a first basic business use case, imagine that we want to create an SOP, which stands for a standard operating procedure for our team on how to write proposals. So let's say this is our hypothetical process where we write an address and then we write the recipient address and then we go through you know, how we're going to build or approach an AI project, go through how we'll build it, create a table to show timelines and ETAs, as well as go through pricing and contingency pricing. And then we'll create some form of chart to walk through our mind map. And then we'll outline what we need from the client what obstacles could arise and go through some terms and conditions for the contract. And let's say we want to go one step further and we want to do some research on the company in terms of their business operations that we could potentially improve or enhance by going to perplexity and searching for their information or stats in bullets. So I just put here a very hypothetical company, PepsiCo, and going through all of their current stats to see what variables can we help with, let's say from an automation standpoint or an AI standpoint. So if we go back and we look here, we want to enter our address. And all I did was record a loom of me going through this Google Doc and then going through this perplexity page and then going to and writing our business address. And I basically just record that as a loom, which is around two minutes here. You can see it's uh, two minutes, 47 seconds. I then went to download the video as an MP4 and then it downloaded as an 18 megabyte file. And then all I had to do was upload said file. And then this took around, if I go to the very bottom, a minute and a half to actually take the document. And my prompt was create an SOP document for the process outlined in this video. So instead of me actually sitting down, creating a Notion file, using GPT to create that Notion file, and then going through and correcting it, I said things exactly the way I wanted to. And it was obviously able to take this and create a transcript out of it, and then take that transcript, follow the instruction, and create this very comprehensive breakdown of exactly everything I went through. So you can see here, even when we go back up to the proposal structure, it's literally everything that I have in the actual Google Doc. I didn't even write it myself into the chat. It was able to pick that up while it was quote unquote watching the video. So you can imagine the number of things you can start to automate now where you just have to document once, then you have the AI take that documentation that only took you maybe five, 10 minutes to go through verbally and then it creates a document that then your teams can start using to execute whatever it is you're trying to automate. So just to prove that this wasn't a fluke, let's download another Loom. This one is for our team, actually, our accounting team, on how to actually extract certain things from our financial documents to help us do our taxes for year end. So if I take this and download it, this will download as an MP4. You can see here it's 9.7 megabytes. I can then go into a brand new AI Studio tab go into create a prompt, make sure you want to select Gemini 2.0 flash experimental. And if you want to enter a prompt here, a system prompt, you can. So I could say for every video I provide you as input, I'd like you to create an SOP file out of it 
that my team can easily follow along any process step by step. So let's say that's our system prompt. What I'll do next is I'll go to here, I'll click on upload a file, and then we'll go to this loom that we just downloaded. And then I'm just going to actually submit it once it's finished uploading because we have that system prompt in place. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click run here and then I'm gonna let it do its thing. Now the last one was around two minutes and 47 seconds and it took a minute and a half. So I'd imagine this will take similar amount of time. So I'll just wait and cut until the end. Oh, wow, I didn't even have to cut until the end. You can see here it actually finished it in 11 seconds. So it went through and it took my system prompt. It's creating an SOP file based on how I outlined the process. So I'm going through here and it's doing an incredible job at breaking everything down exactly as I said in the video. So you can see here the possibilities are truly endless and we're just at the cusp of what's possible. But wait, there's more, truly, there is more. This is cool, but what is really cool is using the stream real time to share your screen and show any process and get real time feedback from the Gemini 2.0 API. So if we go back in here, we go into stream real time. So once you go on the tab, you'll see three different options waiting for you. One says talk to Gemini, which is literally having a back and forth conversation like you would with ChatGPT's advanced voice. And then you have show Gemini, where you can actually show your webcam and either point it at something or show it an object and get again your opinion in real time. Or three, which is the one which is my golden goose, which is share your screen. Very similar to a Google Meet or a Zoom, you can choose to share just one singular tab or you can share your entire screen, which to me is the aha moment that I had. If we go on this bad boy and we click on entire screen, I'm just gonna show you a couple use cases that came to mind that are game changers. And it's not just looking over your code. It, you can do anything. You can go on some support page where maybe the FAQs aren't doing it for you. And you can ask Google to help you do some research while you're actually looking at that page. You could be doing your taxes online and looking at a form on your browser. And then you bring in Gemini to look over it with you and tell you where to get this specific line item from. The possibilities are truly endless. So let's take a look here and we'll click on share your screen and I'll do entire screen and I'll share here and I'll say, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How can I help? Amazing. So I didn't give you any instructions, but I'm going to walk you through a series of things I need to hear help with. I just ask that you're as succinct as possible and to the point. Don't repeat back what you're seeing necessarily unless I ask you. Okay. Okay. I understand. You're going to show me some use cases and you want me to listen to your instructions and provide feedback or help as needed. I will do my best. Okay. So first, what am I looking at right now? Okay, it appears you are on the homepage of a website called promptadvisors.com. The main text on the page says intelligent data, smarter operations. Okay. And it meant good. You're doing good. Um, can you just take a quick look at the website as I'm scrolling through here and just give me your quick perspective on does the layout look good? What could be improved, etc. Okay, I've looked at the website you're scrolling through. The layout seems clean and professional. The use of white space makes it easy to read. I also see the testimonial section. The star ratings are clearly displayed. I think the design is well done overall. However, maybe some color variations could be added to make it even more engaging. Okay, that's fair. All right, let's switch context now. So what am I looking at now? Currently, you are looking at a Google Slides presentation titled Untitled Presentation. The first slide is displayed, showing an investor pitch deck title. There are also two other slides shown on the left side of the screen. Okay, so let's say I had a company that I wanted to create an AGI for. I wanted to pitch my AGI solution. What should I write in every portion of the slide that you can see here? Come up with the actual copy yourself. Okay, I understand. If you were pitching an AGI company, you'd want to tailor the first slide to be impactful. For the company name, you'd put the name of your AGI company. The title would stay as Investor Pitch Deck, since that is descriptive. Under subtitle, you can write the date or a brief description. Below that, it says confidential and copyright, which should be left there for legal protection. Then where it says logo, you should place the company's logo. This should give investors a quick overview of your company and its offering. Okay, um, how about this? Am I doing a good job? Other than the logo, I gotta add that later. Yes, you are doing a good job. A GI company is a good placeholder for the company name. 
The subtitle, Give Me Money Please, is a little too informal though. It might okay, be better to have good. something I, a bit- It's all good, I just wanted to make sure you could see it. All right, let's switch again. So I have no idea how to use this workflow automation tool. I was wondering if you could help me learn it because I just hate watching YouTube tutorial after YouTube tutorial. Okay, I see. You're looking at a workflow automation tool and you'd like my help learning how to use it instead of watching more tutorials. While I can't directly interact with the tool, I can help explain the concepts and guide you through the process. If I wanted to create a Google Sheet, which I haven't made yet, and I want to connect that Google Sheet to GPT somehow, uh, how would I go about doing that? Okay, you're looking to connect a Google Sheet to GPAT using this workflow automation tool. Generally, you'll need to add a trigger to this workflow, and then you can add an action to connect to the Google Sheet, followed by another action to connect to GPT. Is there a particular way you would like to connect your Google Sheets and GPT? No, I just want to go through the different modules. So just like tell me what to do step by step. Don't be descriptive. Okay, I can guide you step by step. First, click the plus sign in the center of the screen. Okay, now? Okay, you should now see a list of apps. Select Google Sheets. Okay, and then what, there's so many options here. What do I pick? Click on Watch New Rows. Okay, so I'm already signed in. Um, what do I choose from these options here? Okay, for the search method, select, select from all. Okay. And then where do I get this spreadsheet ID from? The spreadsheet ID is in the URL of your Google Sheet. Uh, I haven't made it yet. So should I make a Google Sheet now? Yes, you will need to create a Google Sheet first to get the ID. Okay, so um, I'm making a Google Sheet. Now, what I want to do is I want to have just company name and then the company description. And then I want the AI to come up with a, a, a customized email for that combination. So what should I put here? Okay, it sounds like you want to have two columns, one for company name and one for company description. In cell A1, you can type company name. Okay. In cell B... Um, yeah, so I want you to look at this Google Sheet so far and then tell me what should I name it? Just so it's easy for me to find in make.com, which I'm going to get you to help me with. Okay, I see the Google Sheet. It has the title Untitled Spreadsheet and the column headers Company Name and Company Description. To make it easy for you to find, how about naming it Company List or maybe Company Database? Cool. Now, in the Make Automation, we have, again, the Google Sheet thing here. And I want to add a GPT step that will send a customized email here. Uh, what should I name the column? And uh, after, I want you to walk me through how to build the automation. Okay, I see the spreadsheet is now named company list. For the new column, how about email status? That would fit with your goal of sending a customized email. And I can walk you through building the automation. Are you ready to begin with that? Shouldn't this have like the copy? Shouldn't we call it email copy since this is going to have the actual email? That's a good point. Email copy would be a more accurate name for that column cool. since it's going to... Okay, what do we do next? So now we're in here, I pull out the Google Sheet. Where do I get the spreadsheet ID from? Okay, to get the spreadsheet ID, go back to your company list Google Sheet. Where do I get it from? Spreadsheet ID is in the URL of your Google Sheet, right after spreadsheets slash D slash AD. Copy that long string of characters. Like all of this? Yes, exactly. Everything between the D and the edit. Oh, so this. Yes, that's it. Now you can paste that into the spreadsheet ID field in the automation setup. Uh, was there supposed to be a slash in here or no? No, there shouldn't be a slash in the spreadsheet ID. It's just that long string of characters you copied. Okay, sounds good. So I assume this is sheet one. And should I click OK after this? Yes, that looks right. You can click OK to continue. Okay, and what do I put? pick from these? It looks like the since specific ID option is selected, so you should enter an ID number there or you can select all to process all rows. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense in terms of what you can do on that side. So we went from analyzing your website in real time to looking at your Google slide deck and having someone over your shoulder giving you advice. And then we went to an actual case where you would go and watch either my YouTube videos or a colleagues YouTube videos. And basically you have a personalized tutor that can help you. Now I could go through endless use cases, but I wanna keep this video as succinct and compact as possible to make sure you can actually take this and go action it immediately. And if you wanna see more videos using Google AI Studio, specifically these new models that can do all kinds of things, let me know down in the comments below. 
and I will venture more into the Gemini world where usually I'm more of a ChatGPT person. So let me know down in the comments below. Let me know if this is helpful for you and what use cases you might want to see.